Welcome back, my fellow Brews and Brewsers. This is Magus Brew number 10, the podcast where we have Tribe, Commodex Commander, and Crack Among Cold Ones at the same time. And today, in uh, honor of our milestone episode, um, I'd like to thank uh, everybody that likes, watches, subscribes, and comments on all my videos. Um, quite frankly, um, I'm going to drink beer and brew decks regardless, but making videos is optional, so the continued support uh, keeps me going. I appreciate it. And I have some future cha- uh, plans for the channel as well. Um, but back to uh, regular business. Uh, we're doing um, Amina 2, the Fate Shifter, and we're drinking uh, the Left Coast Brewing Voodoo American Stout. <laughs> So still unpacking all the uh, new commanders available in uh, Commander uh, 2018. Um, one of the, this one is one of the um, actual head of one of the uh, main decks, a new Planeswalker commander, uh, Amina II, the Fate Shifter. Um, she actually looks like the um, the girl from um, Beast of the Southern Wild. If you ever seen that movie, maybe not. Uh, but Amina II, the Fate Shifter, costs a white, a blue, and a black. A legendary Planeswalker, Amina II. She comes into with three loyalty counters. Her plus one is draw a card, then put the card from your hand on top of your library. Uh, her minus one is exile another target permanent you own, then return it to the battlefield under your control. And then her minus six is choose left or right. Each player gains control of all non-land permanents other than Amina to the Fate Shifter, controlled by the next player in the chosen direction. And then Amina to the Fate Shifter can be your commander, of course. Um, the abilities are all pretty interesting. Um, However, we're only really caring and concerning ourselves with the minus one. Uh, exile another target permanent you own, then uh, return to the battlefield under your control. Um, it's a standard uh, flicker effect or blink effect. I don't know. If those are words are interchangeable. However, um, this makes uh, infinite ETB trigger with uh, Feldar Guardian. Now, Feldar Guardian uh, from Cat Combo is. Um, Three and a white, uh, one four, cat beast. Uh, when a Feldar Guardian enters the battlefield, you may exile another target permanent you control, then return that card under his owner's control. Now, what this does here um, is you, well, I guess you would have, it doesn't really matter who comes out first, but you have to play both of them. And then flickering one of them, whichever one comes into play second, returning it to the battlefield, and then using um, the ability to flick the other one. Uh, Amina 2, because she comes back into play, like you use the minus one, she goes down to two loyalty, gets flickered when the um, Felidar Guardian comes back into play, and then she comes back into play uh, when she is flickered uh, with three loyalty counters, and you can use her again. So it creates a little, uh, very simple, uh, infinite loop. Um, now, that unfortunately, with like the Sahili um, and Cat combo, that one actually will win you the game. This one won't exactly. This just generates infinite ETBs. Um, so we have to modify it slightly to uh, take advantage of this. Now, uh, a couple different options here. Um, one of them is the life gain option, uh, kind of a Soul Sister style. style. Uh, we have Orac Champion, uh, Soul Warden, and Soul's Attendant. Um, those cards all do relatively the same thing. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain uh, life. The only one that's specific, I think, is um, Soul Warden. Does not have the May ability on it, but that's mostly irrelevant. Um, but I guess it could be. Um, and then you'll generate infinite life this way because the uh, Feldar Guardian will repeatedly enter the battlefield, creating infinite life. And then we run the alternate win uh, con of Test of Endurance uh, of two and two white enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 50 or more life, you win the game. Fun little win con. Usually don't get to play Test of Endurance too often, so that's kind of exciting. Um, now, also, you can run um, as another win outlet is Altar of the Brood. Altar of the Brood is an artifact that costs one. Uh, whenever another permanent enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent puts the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This one actually is a slightly better win con because you'll actually um, mill out all of your opponents, and once you pass the turn, they'll start losing. Um, this one's actually a little bit more effective. Most effective option, actually. And then the last one, other option we can run is a Genesis Chamber. Another artifact that costs two. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, if Genesis, Cha- Genesis Chamber is untapped, that creature's controller creates a 1-1 colorless uh, mirror token, creature token. Um, this will just generate infinite mirrors, uh, which is cool. 
Um, and then you'll have to win subsequently the next turn, swing in and kill everybody. Um, and that's functionally um, the Felidar Guardian combos. Those are all your options, as far as I can tell. Um, there's no um, black creatures you can't... The Zulacor, Zulaport Cutthroat requires a creature to die. Unfortunately, nothing is dying in, in uh, this loop, so those are the only options I found. Now, because we're in the correct colors to run this, and also these cards can be effective even without... Um, I mean, once you already have infinite life, if you have not won yet... Um, we're running um, Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam is a uh, three and two black. Instant, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose life equal to its converted mana cost. You may repeat this process any number of times. Now, because we're in the colors, we're also running Angel's Grace uh, for one white, instant, split second. Um, basically, as long as this spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. It's mana abilities don't use a stack. And then it reads, you can't lose the game this turn, and your opponents can't win the game this turn. Until the end of the turn, damage that we would receive, re reduce your life total to less than one, reduces it to one instead. Um, now these work in conjunction with you, you have to hold priority on the stack, specifically. Uh, so you have to cast Ad Nauseam, responding to your own, you have to hold priority, respond to your own Ad Nauseam, and then cast Angel's Grace. Um, that's the only way this combo works, but this allows you to draw your deck. Alternatively, you could just... Um, have infinite life already and then just draw your deck that way that will also work um, and then we're also running necropotence uh, necropotence is a very old enchantment but um, it's a uh, three black like three black 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 um, skip your draw step whenever you discard a card exile that card from your graveyard pay one life exile the top card of your library face down put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step um, this just kind of works as ad nauseum um, number two um, just powerful card lets you, if you have infinite light, life, lets you draw well, all your all your deck except one card, and then um, you can typically win the game from that from that point. Um, we're running um, because after drawing your deck, you need a way to win. You kind of really have particularly any option. You can do really whatever you want right here, um, but I just decided to be make it easy, and I decided to run um, Laboratory Maniac. Laboratory Maniac is just a uh, exceptionally powerful card. Another alternative win con. I guess this is the deck of alternative win cons. Uh, but I figured that was kind of an easier option. Um, and you can then uh, conversely like or also run like Doomsday because uh, Doomsday also uh, like Necropons just costs three black mana symbols. Um, so Sorcery, uh, Search your Library for and Graveyard for five cards and exile the rest. Put the chosen cards on top of your library and in any order you lose half your life rounded up. Um, most of the time always irrelevant, because you always win the game when you do this. Um, well, unless somebody stops you. Um, you don't have to run Doomsday, and there's a lot of various different Doomsday piles you can run. Um, there's ones that, like, specifically using, like, Unearth to bring back your Laboratory Maniac if you put it in the graveyard to win that way. Um, typically those ones run a little heavy on cards that are a little bit, like, less useful. So, the easiest one typically is, because all these cards are good anyways, uh, is just making a pile with Gush, uh, Gitaxian Pro, Blind's Eye Diamond, Yagmoth's Will, and Laboratory Maniac. Uh, that's typically your best option as far as piles go. Uh, relatively straightforward, um, and you put them in, in your stack in that order. Um, but draw into Gush, whether it's your draw step or you have a different card um, that works. Anything that lets you draw a card. Um, play Gush, you have to return two islands, or if you have the mana you can tap them. Um, and you gush into LED and probe because those are next. Uh, play LED, um, cast the probe, and then you hold priority. Um, crack the LED for three black. Draw Yogg's Will. Once the Gitaxian probe has a uh, resolve with the three black man in your mana pool, replay it. Or yeah, play the Yogg's Will, and then um, now that you can play things out of your graveyard, play the LED. Crack it for blue. Um, play Probe, that will grab you Laboratory Maniac. Play the Laboratory Maniac with the three blue that you uh, got off your LED, and then Gush to win. And that is the most basic um, Doomsday pile uh, you can make with cards that are um, not difficult to run. And yeah, so I mean, that's mostly the combo angles of the deck. Um, fortunately for Amina 2, she's in very good colors. And so you get to run like all the good black tutors, and there's a lot of cards that are like fairly effective with her using her other ability, like um, 
Dark Confidant is obviously a very good card because you can kind of control what's on the top of your deck, taking advantage of that. Um, and yeah, there's a few other cards, but I mean, um, her other abilities are interesting. Her ultimate, I don't honestly understand. I mean, I understand what it does, but I don't understand like how it's useful. Uh, it's kind of a very, very like strange, chaotic, um, very non-Esper um, win con, I guess, or if, if that's supposed to be a win con, I'm unsure. I cannot tell. Uh, but it's cool though, and I mean, there's probably some way around it that makes it cool, but. Yeah, that's a function of the deck, so I think it's relatively straightforward. Standard uh, standard combo deck, so uh, everybody have a good day, and we're going to keep your combos classy.